Hi, I'm Braco Gang, it's me, Warren, and today we're going to take a look at uh, V9, Braco V9, uh, the .NET Core Edition. And we're going to take a look at how we can publish, uh, we've built our site and we're going to publish it to IIS, uh, be it locally or uh, with Web Deploy or whatever. Uh, let's take a look and jump on in and see what we've got to do. So I've um, done some Googling um, at the Microsoft Docs and it talks about publishing an ASP.NET Core app to IIS. Um, I might want to do this if I'm not doing, uh, I might want to do this if I am, one, uh, have a multilingual site. So a site that needs many domains mapped to it. I might want to use IIS as opposed to IIS Express or Kestrel. Um, running from the .NET uh, command line or the CLI, the .NET, .NET run, or with Visual Studio if I just do F5 or debug or debug and run. Um, that just works by mapping IIS Express or Kestrel. Um, so I'm going to jump in and let's take a skim read of this. So the first thing it mentions is to install the .NET Core hosting bundle. Um, I've already done this. I've got IIS on my machine and I've already installed uh, this application or ex executable. Uh, just allows IIS to uh, proxy the request from .NET Core uh, processes uh, and executables uh, into IIS. Um, but yeah, does, does all that magic for us. So uh, if I was following it along, then I would probably need to run terminal as an admin. Let's get rid of this one. And what was the two commands? Here it is. So net oops, stop WAS. Yes. Waz. Net stop waz. Don't know what waz is. But anyway, that is to stop IIS Express. Uh, we've installed it, uh, or we've installed it, and then we run that command, and then we're going to do net start, and then w3. So at the minute, we're just following, the, following their documentation. Ta-da. Right. Next thing, uh, it's saying to create an app. Well, we want an Umbraco app. So let's do a uh, .NET new, or let's just change directory to uh, underscore demos. Yeah. And then we're going to do a .NET new Umbraco dash dash name um, multilingual. Yeah, I don't think I spelled multilingual right, but I don't think that's the end of the world. Uh, there is an update to the template pack. Uh, I'm on RC001 and there's RC001.pre001 available. I uh, assume that's been pushed to the nightly feed and I'm getting that from our, our my get feed as opposed to new get. Anyway, enough of that said, uh, I'm going to change directory into multilingual. And we'll do a .NET build, which does uh, a NuGet restore. So we can just do .NET build. So it'll build the project and do a restore of the NuGet packages. Uh, and, and it's all good. We can then do a .NET run and just check our project runs. And we can probably set it up and configure the database. Perfect. And I'm going to click on this link with control click in the terminal and it opens up. Then I get the lovely V9 Umbraco installer. So I can then do Warren Buckley, Warren at Umbraco.com, password 1234, my super secure password. And then I'm going to set up the um, SQL Server connection, database connection. And for me, I've got a local host um, multilingual and I'm going to just use an SA uh, database uh, password and then if I can remember it, pretty sure it's that. And I am connected 
to my SQL Server, my local one, and I'm just going to go and create the database. Happy days. Click continue. And let's just make sure that uh, we create a very simple doc type and uh, publish that. So all good. I'm in the back office of Umbraco now. Uh, I can dismiss the tour because I'm quite familiar with the back office. And then I'm going to go to settings and create a doc type with a template. And we'll just call this home. If it's uh, like a house or home icon, yeah, the usual. And then we'll call this uh, content group or tab, group even, not tabs. Um, and we'll call this header for now, nice and simple. And we'll give it a text string. And we'll save that. And what's the next thing I would like to do? I would like to, uh, one, obviously allow it as root. And do that. And uh, next is to update the template. And then we'll just do a very simple header one tag. And then do model.header and save the template or the view. And then let's go and create our content node. Home. Uh, hello world. Save and publish. View the page. Perfect. It works. So I now have my amazing website of hello world and I want to publish that to IIS or want to host it with IIS locally just so I can do uh, a multilingual site and maps and domains. Um, so let's figure out how we're going to do that. So let's stop this and go back to the terminal and control C and stop process. So uh, if we just move my terminal out of the way for a second. Uh, this is the, what page am I on? Yeah, this is about the .NET Core hosting bundle. Oh, this is where I would download it. Okay, no, I've, I've done that. I've done that step. We've created our application and now we want to deploy it. Uh, I could obviously open it in Visual Studio and do a right click on the solution and uh, publish and create a publish profile and just say that I want to create it uh, to a folder. Uh, but for now, we'll use the CLI. Um, look, it even tells us the command we want to run. Perfect. Uh, let's, before we do that though, just do .NET publish dash dash help, help, that's about it right, yeah. Let's just make this terminal window a little bit bigger. So we give it the, the project the, the, or a solution file, and then we can specify the folder location that we want to publish this application to, or where we want to publish to. Um, and there's some other options here about um, if we want a self-contained uh, application, maybe your web server doesn't have the .NET runtime um, installed for whatever reason, uh, then you could obviously create a self-contained, um, and obviously that means you're bundling the .NET SDK with your application, obviously going to be a lot bigger, um, 9 times out of 10, probably neither going to need to use that. So. No self-contained, uh, and the default is this for it to be true. So this is not going to bundle the the framework of .NET Core with with uh, our application. So let's do .NET publish dash dash configuration release. Um, obviously, I could do debug if I want a, a debug application, but for now, let's do release. Uh, pretend. Um, I'm getting ready to deploy this or push, put this somewhere. You can see it's doing a build and it's told us where it's put the files. So I can navigate to this directory, uh, multilingual. So it's inside of the bin folder, then release, then .NET 5, and then the publish folder. Um, oh. Uh, so we've done that, move the contents folder to the IS site folder on the server. So we could just manually copy 
Um, we can manually copy those files, can't we? If I can remember what we call this, multilingual. And then in bin, and then we've got release.net5, and then we've got a publish folder. So everything in this publish folder, you can see DLLs along here, um, dubbed up root, so static files like CSS and JavaScript, and we've got um, the Razor Views templates, and other bits and pieces, and obviously application settings um, for the development environment and our main application settings. Anyway, let's um, do what it says and copy it. We will, I don't know, I'll be lazy and just create one here, and we'll call it multilingual ILS and shove it there. And then we're going to paste the contents. So an alternative uh, to that is obviously I could have used the uh, dash dash configuration release and then done dash dash out and give uh, is it out? Let's double check. Output not out. Output and then give a absolute path. Or I think we can give a relative path to that application as well. So for now, let's uh, just follow the documentation and uh, carry along. So I've got that, and then I am going to go to IIS. I'm going to create a new site, and I'm going to call it that. Uh, or the path is that even, sorry, and then we're going to call it that's super exciting. Multilingual. Um, let's just do uh, UK dot my site dot local host and go OK. Um, I'm now gonna gonna use um, I've got a hosts file editor just because I'm lazy and don't like always trying to find the host file on disk. Um, I know it's uh, C users, etc. I can never remember basically and end up Googling it every time. So hence I have this hosts file editor application. It means that I can then just write um, some new uh, rules. So uk.mysite.local is going to go to our local host. And then I've got a, another multilingual variant or another domain dk.mysite.local. So let's add that binding as well. Uh, what was it? dk.mysite.local. Cool. And then we're going to go and visit that domain. We'll go to the UK one first and just see that something returns. It's thinking about it. Oh, there we go. There's my lovely hello world. Uh, let's just check in a different tab that the DK1 responds. DK.mysite.localhost. Did I add the bindings? Let's just double check. Oh, typo on my part. I did just put local as opposed to local host. And then let's refresh. Ta-da! Okay, and then we could do our usual multilingual uh, setup uh, in Embraco now. So I can log into the back office, and then I can do dismiss uh, the notification or the, the email sign up there. Um, and then I'm going to go to settings, document types, home permissions and I'm going to say that this can vary by culture and then I can say that this specific property can also vary by culture. Save that, save that and then I'm going to create a new language. So at the minute we have the English as a default so I can now add Danish as another language. And then let's go back to content and our home node. And you can see I've got hello world uh, for the, the English variant. I can click this drop down 
and C, uh, open in split view, and then I can go, I don't know, home DK, uh, hello from Denmark, or something similar, I don't know, something different from this value. So we can save and publish. I'm going to publish both variants, the English and the Danish, which you can see that it's not been created as of yet. So if we close this, you can see that uh, at the minute, we've only got one um, URL. So if I click it, it takes me by default to the UK variant. Uh, it doesn't know how to switch context, so we need to map the domains in the back office of the Morocco. So if I right click on the home content node here, and I can go down to culture and host names and add a new domain. And we're gonna say that the English uh, language is gonna to be to uh, uk.mysite.local.host. And then we're gonna add another new domain and we're gonna go dk.mysite. If I can remember how to spell or type. And then we're going to say Danish or Denmark. And then we're going to save that. And that should be it. We can refresh. We can see that the UK still says hello world. And then if we refresh the DK domain, you can see I get hello from Denmark. Magical. How clever is that? So if I now revisit the node in the back office, you should be able to see that I get different domains. You can see that I'm in the UK variant and I get uh, the full domain. Um, so yeah, perfect. That was it. That was running uh, .NET Core um, with IIS. Uh, so I think for most people, the, the, the piece of the puzzle that um, you may miss just by assuming that you can just point um, IS to your application files um, like you would with .NET Framework. It doesn't work that way. Um, so the first thing to do is to install the .NET Core hosting bundle. So that's, that's step one, make sure that you do that. Next would be a .NET publish. Um, and you can do that either by Visual Studio uh, or Rider, or I assume Rider will be able to help you do a, a publish. Um, or you can use the CLI tool.NET publish and uh, give it some configuration values. Eek! Uh, in my haste last night, I obviously forgot to record an outro. Um, yeah, hopefully that was useful. You managed to follow along and figure out how to publish your V9 and Broco site to IIS. And if you're doing multilingual sites, hopefully that was helpful. Let me know. Drop me a line in the comments below um, or Twitter or email or whatever. Um, until next time, have a great one, Umbraco family, and keep on hacking. Bye.